everybody, I'm Mariana from the Schulich School of Business. It's my first microphone this year, so um, if it gets too loud or you can't hear me, let me know. Beside me, I have Nina and I also have Kenny. They're first year students in the BBA program at Schulich. And they're going to talk to you about um, their experience a little bit so far in the program. We've only been there 60 days, so that they have a lot to tell you. Um, so at Schulich, I play a number of different roles. Uh, I am a recruitment officer, and that's why I'm here today. I'm here to talk to you about Schulich, the different programs, admission requirements, etc. Once you apply and submit your application, I also sit on the admission committee. So myself and the other members sit down and read all your applications, make decisions, and then send you uh, an admission form or an intense form. Once you're admitted to the program, um, I act as your advisor. I help you through your courses for first year, and I help you navigate through the program for the, entire, the rest of your four years, actually. How many of you have been to your campus already? Not many? A few? A couple? Okay. So, we're a little bit away from here, about 40 minutes away from my car. Uh, we're located on Keelan Steels. York University has two campuses. There's one at Keelan Steels and one at Baby and Lawrence, and Shulik is one of the faculties at the Keelan Steels location. So if you haven't been to York University yet, I do invite you to come in over to York on November 17th. That is our fall campus day event, and it's an open house across the campus. So Shulik will be there, and other faculties will also be there. Uh, students will be there, um, professors will be there, so you'll have a chance to see campus, see our facilities, meet more of our students, and get a general idea as to what or the type of campus you will be frequenting over the next four years. All right? So I'm going to turn the tables over to Kenny and Nina. They're going to talk to you about their why they chose shooting. Well, Thank you. 
all going over the whole process. But what I learned is that we're still in the process of trying to be independent. Sorry, this mic is really... So, yeah, sometimes you think you can handle... Hello? Hello? Can you turn it up a little bit? Okay. There are certain things that you think you would be able to handle. Okay, I'll just do it with them. Your voice is loud enough to talk. <laughs> Candy, you are horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> So your classes are going to be very small, anywhere from 25 to 50 students in your class. That is very small at the university level. Um, there are other business programs at York, and they admit about 700 to 1,000 students per year. And those types of courses there, you're going to be in a lecture hall full of 100 or 500 of your classmates. So it's more difficult to get to know your professors. Um, it's more difficult to interrupt your professors during the class, ask questions. And as Kenny and Nina, that it's very simple for them to interrupt this professor as he's giving a lecture to get some more information or clarification. Uh, also, our professors do have office hours. And if you have any um, additional office hours or any help that you would need, it's very easy to schedule it with your professor because it's such a small class. Okay? So it is a limited enrollment program. Now, the difference between the BBA and the IBBA program, what does I stand for in IBBA? International. International. Um, is that the IBBA program will require you to study a language for three years. Okay? So not only do you need to study a language, but you also have to achieve advanced level competency in one language. How many of you are taking French right now in grade 12? A few. So if you're taking... Uh, grade 12 French, we will place you at advanced level French in your first year. So at the end of your first year, you'll have advanced level French done, your advanced level competency is done, but you still have two more years of languages to do. So you can continue with French or choose a different language if you like. Okay? So that's up to you. But if you really want to challenge yourself and you really like French, but you want to try something new because you're tired of learning French, right? You can start off with another language, for example, Spanish. We will teach you introductory Spanish in first year, in, uh, intermediate Spanish in second year, and then we will give you the advanced level in third year. So you'll get to your advanced level competency in three years as opposed to one in the first year. Okay? So IBBA students are studying a language, a language course supported by York University. There's about 14 languages to choose from. As well, IBBA students are going on exchange. 
we will send you to another country to study in your third or fourth year. Um, and we have partner schools in 58 countries, sorry, 58 partner schools in 27 different countries. So we have schools in Central America, South America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. So IBBA students will be going abroad for at least one term in year three or year four. BBA students, if you're interested in going on exchange, you can also go on exchange if you'd like to. But again, it's not until you're three or four. It's an option. We do have our own career center, and Kenny was mentioning the different competitions that he's involved with in extracurricular involvement. And we have our own career center at Schulich dedicated to our undergraduate students and graduate students. Um, the career center is responsible for, for providing you with the resources and also they do post some summer internships as well as career opportunities on their passport, password protected website. So you'll have access to that website to apply for summer internships or your career opportunity at the end of your four years. The Career Center does post different events to help you get there. We have Career Day in September, internship fairs in January, company information sessions um, with a variety of different representatives from companies in all industries, whether it's accounting, economics, finance, marketing, uh, etc. This is just a snapshot of some of the companies that do hire our students, but this is not all of them. Okay. They also offer like resume writing workshops, interview skill workshops, etiquette workshops, uh, lunch etiquette workshops, how to dress workshops, etc. All that will help you get or land that opportunity for you at the end of your four years of study. All right, so now that you know a little bit about Schulich, um, Kenny did also mention about tuition. Now, Schulich has not deregulated their fees, so students coming to Schulich will pay about $8,000 a year to study uh, from year one all the way through to year four. Okay, that's from September to April. We only run classes from September to April. If you'd like to take summer classes, that's an additional cost. But our majority of our term runs from September to April, and you can use the summer to pick your electives. Now, being an applicant to York University slash Schulich, um, you can dip into both scholarship funds. So you can apply to the York scholarship funds, and you can apply to the Schulich scholarship funds. Um, and you're eligible. Some of them are automatic, and some of them you need to apply for. And you can start applying already. The deadline is February 2nd for some. So if you are a very hardworking student, um, it may be worth your while to start applying for some of those scholarships. But an example of an automatic scholarship, just based on your grades, for York, if your average is between 85 to 89.9, York will give you $1,000 per year to study, 90 to 94.9, 2,000 a year, and then 95 plus 3,000 a year. Okay. Shulik um, will give our top 15 applicants who accept their offer an additional 5,000 just for applying to Shulik. Okay, but there are many, many other scholarships and awards available to you as applicants to your university and as applicants to Shulik. So it may be worth your while to investigate those a little bit. Okay, so extracurricular activities. I'm going to turn the tables over to our students. They're going to tell you about the different opportunities that they're doing right now and the importance of those opportunities. Okay, so I guess that's when you get to university, you're going to find out that it's, it's like high school. It's not just about getting the marks. You, of course, you have to be involved around the school, joining clubs, events, activities. So. When I first entered Schulich, I ran for student election. So I got the opportunity to run for first year representative on the student council. And I won that, so which means I represent over 450 first year student population to the faculty and administration. And I, um, basically the student government, we planned lots of fun activities throughout the year. We also have a lot of clubs and they have uh, conferences, events, workshops, and so on. Also, I live on residence, and we, I am also involved in a lot of uh, residence activities. So basically, I think uh, the most important thing is to keep up with your marks, and as well as uh, being involved in the school, that helps a lot. So, can I pass it on to Kenny? Yeah, I'm 
basically what Ina said is um, very true, how you have to balance your academic life and also you have to participate in extracurricular activities. It really gives you an opportunity to network with other people. So for me personally, I don't live on res, so I, I'm not involved in those res activities. But uh, I try to join as many clubs as I can. So for example, I talked about there's that case competition and basically that was an opportunity for me to get to know what it's like uh, to work because they gave us real life work, uh, like certain cases that represent real life. And after that we had a networking dinner with uh, EMY. So I get to talk to them and sort of network with other people. And also I joined uh, other clubs such as the York Marketing Association, the Accounting Society, uh, the York Finance Club. And those also gave me other opportunities too. For example, the York Marketing, I participated in another case competition because I love case competitions. Um, so there, that one was about uh, marketing. They gave us these cases that sort of uh, gave, let us know what it's like. And that was uh, a good opportunity to do. And there was also other conferences, for example, the Future Skills Conference, which was um, last Wednesday. So that just taught us about what to, uh, about like, our skills and what we should be doing to uh, promote ourselves. And yeah, it's basically it. So there's actually a lot of opportunities as undergraduates to get involved in the school and sort of network yourself, get yourself out there, know how it looks like. So getting involved um, is very important because what you learn in this classroom is all the theory um, and the case-based analysis and all the concepts that you need to know, but you, you can take that to the workforce, but you also need some people skills. Right? You need those soft skills to be able to, um, number one, network, and number one, talk to others. Okay? So we provide you with these extracurricular activities, number one, to put what you learn in the classroom into practice, but also to allow you to enhance those soft skills and make you a well-rounded business individual, business leader in the future. All right? So because of the importance of getting involved, um, we have embedded that into our application process. I'm going to talk to you about admissions right now, and all this, what I'm going to say to you is not in the handbook at all. You may want to take some notes, so I'll give you an opportunity to reach for a pen, or your phone, <laughs> whatever makes it easier, okay? I know that they're videotaping this, and this will be on the web, but so that you can remember a little bit. Now, the application process to Schulich is twofold. Number one, we have a supplementary admission application form. How many of you have heard of that? Okay. So every applicant to Schulich needs to apply to the UAC, and they also need to supply us with this supplementary form. It's very important. 50% of our decision depends on this supplementary form. So the supplementary form will be available on our website on November 19th, not too far. Um, but if you come to our Fall Campus Day event on November 17th, we'll give you a sneak peek of the supplementary form. Okay? So the supplementary form consists of a couple of essay questions and an activity report. In the past, we've asked for reference letters, but this year we are not asking for reference letters because some school boards are following the Work to Rule campaign. So in order to make it fair across the bo all boards, um, we have eliminated the reference letter report sheet. So we don't need a reference letter this year. Supplementary is available on November 19th, but it's not due until February the 6th. Okay, however, don't wait until January 31st to fill out that form. And in order to answer the questions, you need to be involved. So if you're not involved in any extracurricular activities, you need to start. Yes. Would that include volunteering? Yes. So I'm going to talk about... Um, we're interested in your volunteer or extracurricular involvement over the past two years, so grade 11 and grade 12. We're not interested in grade 9 and grade 10. I'm sure you did excellent volunteering at the time, but for this form, we're only interested in grade 11 and grade 12. Okay, so an example of an extracurricular activity is really anything that does not involve a textbook. Okay, so for example, volunteering in your community. Maybe you're a tutor. Maybe you have a part-time job. Maybe you're involved in a school club, on the student council, maybe on a school sports team, maybe you play sports outside the school, either professionally or intramural sports. Okay. Maybe you're a swimming instructor. Maybe you're taking piano lessons to write your RCM exams. 
maybe you are involved in a competition here, whether it's DECA competition, science, math competition, I'm sure there's others. Um, maybe you've been invited to represent the school at a conference. Okay, so these are all different types of examples of extracurricular activities that you can include on your activity report. The activity report should be in a chart format. You basically list the club name, what your role was in that club, what you learned from that club, what leadership skills you've gained from that club, and how many hours you've dedicated to that club over the past two years. Okay, any questions so far? Yes? Is there a different process for early admission? We don't have early admission. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, is it hours like just a rough estimate? Rough estimate, yes. Now, because we don't require a reference letter, I hope that you do not embellish your hours because we all know that you need to come to school, um, eat, sleep, right, take a shower. So there's a certain amount of hours per day that you can possibly dedicate to an activity. You're not all superhuman or bionic, okay? So don't embellish your, your activity report. Um, we do have a formula that we use in the office to ensure that. Um, just be truthful. We're not looking for quantity of activities. We're looking for quality. Okay, we're looking for students who are well-rounded, students who can work with um, others from diverse groups, students who can work in a team, and students who have some leadership skills or potential to be a leader one day. Yes. Uh, at Shulik, we do have your major is business. Um, you cannot make minor in something else outside of business because it's not an interdisciplinary program. You can take courses outside of business to fulfill your non business electives, but you cannot have the day of minor minor. Okay? Good question. Okay. So the supplementary form is due February the 6th, 4 p.m. in our office. So you can either walk it in, courier, mail it. But if you're mailing it, you have, should mail it at least 10 days in advance, okay? Um, like I said, don't wait until January 31st to start this form. The essay questions have a word limit. It's about 250 words. If you're like me and like to ramble on, that's going to be your biggest challenge, reducing it to 250 words, okay? So take some time to prepare it. We're looking at spelling. We're looking at grammar. Please spell the word Schulich correctly. Okay. Um, and we're basically looking at your leadership skills and ability to work with members groups. So keep that in mind when you're preparing your answers to the questions. Okay. So I'm going to turn the tables over to Nina and Kenny. They're going to tell you how they prepare for their form. Okay, so I guess. This, obviously, this application is uh, a lot of work, so make sure when you're writing the, uh, when you're done writing the essay questions, get somebody else to read it over to check, make sure that it flows and there are no errors in grammar, spelling. That's very important. Also, uh, what I did was I became really involved in school in grade 11 and grade 12 to make sure that I have excellent activities to put on for in the on the supplementary form. So I uh, I got myself involved in school. I became the president of business club, and Kenny as well. He, I was a previous year, and he was uh, president for twenty last year. And I also created Deca in math for the first year. So that was really good experience. Everything that you think is. Uh, that you did well, you can put it on, on the activity log. And uh, I think that's all. So for the essay questions, like basically the only thing I have to tell you about is be honest, because those questions ask you, it's not like a simple what did you do question. It's you actually have to think about it. For mine, like it was very hard. I had to think about it. I had to be honest with myself, right? So I had to sort of think about what would I do, like, what to write, and like, if, if it really represents me. Because you're going into school that for the next four years, right? So you want to know if this is right for you. So these questions, some of them are like, one of them was sort of random, but yeah, it just sort of tests like how, how you like um, react to those situations. But 
Uh, yeah, so you should answer with like what you what you really think. And also, in essay, it's really important to have someone go over it just to make sure it flows. Because you're sending an application form, and it's really important that you don't make silly mistakes like grammar or spelling. For me, I had uh, my teacher like, edit it just to read over for like grammar or spelling mistake issues. So I, I recommend you could do that too. And also for the list of activities, it's really it's good to have a more, but it's also like it's not really more. Sometimes it's more about quality, what you do there, and what you gain from those, like your experiences. So like what Nina said, um, those experiences sort of helped her for the MBA. Like I talked about how they helped me become a better leader because it actually required a lot of work, the deck uh, and like the other things you guys did and also the other clubs I also joined in. So that's because um, if you're like a leader in those clubs, you sort of de develop your skills, or if you're participating in any events, there's skills that you can develop from those, and you can talk about what's the best thing you took away from, um, what's the greatest experience you took away from those clubs. So uh, yeah, so that's basically um, the gist of it. So. Yeah, so yes, be very honest with yourself. Um, this is where you're going to spend the next four years. So if it's going to be business, then just sit back, take a deep breath. What I would do is when you get the application form with all the questions, just read it over and put it away. The week after, pull it out again, make a few notes, and then put it away. Um, and then third week, just get right into it. Start making, writing up your essay questions. Um, your activity reports, you don't have to wait for the form to be available on November 19th. You can start working.